dan selamat sejahtera. Good morning, everyone. Okay, um, let's continue. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed about the. Uh, actually, we started to discuss about the first step in the in the crystallization. The first stage in the crystallization, which is the nucleation. The bond, the the, the 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 moment when the crystal bond, just like when the baby was conceived in the womb, yeah, just imagine that the analogy. I don't know how to use another analogy, but the moment when the crystal is conceived, if you like, is born. So that's the nucleation. Okay? But before that, we must create. We must create the situation or the conditions to start the nucleation. Again, if I use the, the analogy, you know, we must create the situation before the baby can be conceived. Same thing. What is now? What is in the context of crystallization before the nucleation can even start? What is the condition that we must create? Remember, I have explained in great length in the last two lectures. What is the condition we must create before the nucleation can even start? For a solution, what is the condition that we must create? Don't just look at me. <laughs> Don't just keep quiet. I have spent a lot of time to explain to you what is the condition that you must create before the nucleation can start. For a solution, we have to create a super saturated solution. Wake up, wake up. Okay? This Monday morning, I know. Wake up. Don't sleep. Yes, we must create a super saturated condition. Or for a melt, we must cool down the melt to below the melting point of the uh, component in the in the melt. For example, if we are cooling uh, the vegetable oil, the, the the liquid palm oil containing the triglycerides, so we must cool down below the melting point before. The, before the triglycerides can start to crystallize. So then only we can start with the first stage, which is the nucleation. And we can divide the nucleation into a primary nucleation and secondary nucleation. And primary nucleation can be divi divided further into homogeneous and heterogeneous. For for food, for food system, the homogeneous nucleation is quite rare, but more common is the heterogeneous nucleation. Then we get a nucleus to form, yeah? or a lot of nucleus. So the plural form, we call it nuclei. So we get crystal to form. Then after that, they will grow. Okay. Um, when we have crystal in the system, the crystal sometimes can uh, can break into more crystal. So when one crystal break into two, it will become two new new uh, two new sites, two new sites for the nucleus to grow. Okay, so that this is called secondary nucleation. So for secondary nucleation, we must have the crystal already present in the system. And this crystal can serve as a new, uh, uh, you know, as a new site for the formation of more crystals. Okay. So we, we, I have uh, gone through this formation of crystal from 
formation of crystal nuclei, primary nucleation from a solution that contains no, no pre-existing crystal. So homogeneous nucleation is the formation of nuclei within a homogeneous fluid. Rarely occurs, yeah? because uh, in the food system, very difficult to get a very pure homogeneous uh, system. There's always some foreign particles, <coughs> other particles present in the system, and that can also uh, participate in the crystallization process. So more commonly, we get heterogeneous nucleation initiated by contact with foreign particles and surfaces. Secondary nucleation refers to the formation of crystal nuclei due to the presence of existing crystal. So, after the primary uh, nucleation, we get a crystal form, but the crystal can break down. It can, uh, it can break into, uh, into more crystal. Yeah? Because uh, the crystal can collide or come into contact with the wall of the container and it will uh, form smaller or more particles. Yeah? We just uh, pecah, lah, eh, break up into more. And each one of these will serve as a new site for the crystal to grow. Or the crystal can collide among themselves. So again, it can form more sites. It will break into fragments to form new sites for new crystal. Or it can collide with a stirrer. Again, the same effect. Uh, sometimes the surface of the crystal is not smooth. Yeah. You can, uh, if you look under the microscope, actually the surface of the crystal may not be very smooth. It has some, maybe like a, pro a protrusion. A protrusion like this. So under the influence of, you know, stirring, shear, that can cause the small protrusion to break from the main structure and form a new nuclei. And this is called secondary nucleation. You can get more explanation from the handout and also from the book by Richard Hattel, eh, that book. This is uh, taken from that book. Now, when nucleation starts to occur, the condition in terms of the rate of cooling, in terms of the temperature, in terms of the stirring, the speed of stirring, everything, it will affect the rate of nucleation. How fast? Yeah? How fast? So the rate, here we are talking about the rate, how fast or how slow. And that will determine the speed of the nucleation or the rate of, of the nucleation would determine how much crystal we will get, the amount of solid crystalline phase, the amount of crystal that we will get, solid crystal, how much. It will also determine the number of crystal, how many crystal, small number, large number, huge number. The rate of nucleation also will determine the size of the crystal. So sometimes you can get a small number of crystal, but large size, big size. Or you can get large number of crystal, but very fine tiny, small particle, small crystal size. So you can have uh, two situations, yeah? small number but big size of crystal, large number but small size crystal. 
And um, in some situation, in some application, you want either one. Sometimes you want to have large number of crystal with very fine uh, size. But sometimes you want to have a small size, uh, sorry, small number, but uh, big particle size, big crystal size. Okay. How do we how do we uh, control to get with you know to get large number or small number, large size, small size crystal? We can control or we can manipulate the nucleation in terms of the rate. We can play around, we can manipulate the temperature, we can manipulate the rate of cooling. We can manipulate the degree of supersaturation. Remember the delta C, the CSS minus CS. Yeah? Because uh, this is what we call the manipulating the or controlling the driving force. Yeah? Remember this keyword, driving force, dia penggerak. What drive the nucleation? What make the nucleation fast or slow? It's about the driving force. What are the driving force? It can be the rate of cooling. How fast? It can be the degree of supersaturation. It can be even the, you know, how we control the stirring. A few things that we can control so that we can manipulate the driving force. So this diagram has a lot of information that we need to understand here. Forget about the, well, uh, first of all, we plot the nucleation rate against the driving force. Nucleation rate against the driving force. So, um, and remember, there are two types of nucleation, uh, two types of uh, primary nucleation. This graph is for primary nucleation, not secondary. Okay, and for primary nucleation, there are two types. One is homogeneous, which is very rare for food. More common one is heterogeneous. So. When comparing these two, we can see the homogeneous nucleation in terms of uh, the nucleation rate at the maximum point, at the maximum, at the fastest rate of nucleation, we can see the homogeneous nucleation is much higher compared to heterogeneous nucleation. Because the system is homogeneous. It's easy to deal with for a system with a homogeneous, uh, easier to deal with a homogeneous system rather than a more heterogeneous, more complex system. So you can see the very obviously the characteristic or the difference between this homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation. At the highest rate here, at this point, you can see that the homogeneous nucleation is much or significantly faster than the heterogeneous nucleation. So that is one. Then let's look at just the heterogeneous now. We focus now on heterogeneous nucleation, which is more common for food system. And we have three points here, point A, point B, and point C. And here we are interested to look at the driving force that would drive the process of nucleation. Now, there is something uh, new, maybe, I don't know whether you have heard this term, class transition, anywhere or somewhere in the previous course, in the first year, maybe in the introduction to food science and technology, is there any mention of glass transition? Ada tak? Tell me, ada atau tak ada? Ah, tak ada, senang. <laughs> Don't show me your blank face. <laughs> ada tak ada? Tak ada. Ada, ada, ada. Okay. Tak ada, okay, tak apa, I will explain. Okay. Um, 
Well, anyway, the last topic in this course, IMK 209, actually, this is the main thing, the main concept that we have to learn. It's not that difficult concept to understand. It's like this. Um, well, it, it, it is a difficult concept to explain. <laughs> Uh, but not easy, not, 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 not that difficult to understand, okay? Let me find the best way to explain this. What is glass transition? Okay? Mm. Okay. Let's say we have, uh, we, have, we, have, we have a system, we have a solution, let's say. And we have molecules, okay? Just like in this room, we have, this room is a system. And each one of us is the molecules. Okay. Um, we can increase the concentration of the molecules in this room. Two ways. We can bring in more molecules into this room. So we can increase the concentration. So meaning we add more solutes. Okay, more sugar, more solutes. So that's one way. Another way, uh, we can take out the solvent, right? If we have a solution, we can take out the solvent by drying. Yeah, by drying, by evaporation, by uh, filtration. So that will also increase the concentration. When we increase the concentration to a very, very high concentration, now you can imagine in one unit volume. Let's say one unit volume and I take these two chairs and these two chairs. So we have four molecules in one unit volume. So I have another one unit volume here, another one unit volume here, okay? Four, four, four chairs, four chairs, okay? Imagine. So now I can put four chairs in one unit volume. If I have more solutes, now I can pack more molecules per unit volume. So instead of four, I can pack five, six, 8, 10, 12, as much as I can squeeze the molecules in one unit volume. The more molecules I squeeze into one unit volume, the less the movement of that molecule because the space is very little. Right? Imagine this room can take maybe, I don't know, 80, 80 people. The normal, normal, you yeah? uh, know, in, in normal situation. But if I, can bring, if I bring in 1,000 people, I don't know. There's no way we can move around. We have to squeeze, right? So the glass transition means it's a temperature. If when we cool down the system below that temperature, the system will turn into a glassy state. Okay. So before we can even understand this, we have to understand about the glass transition. Glass transition we give, we denote the glass transition with this symbol. T, T is temperature and G. Yeah, that is glass transition. So, at, at any temperature, T, if we cool down the system at temperature T, and if the temperature can be bring down, brought down to below the Tg of the system, then we can say the system is in the glassy state. The system is a glass. When the system in the glassy state, ah, anyway, glassy state is the opposite of crystalline state. Glassy state is also um, is also said to be in the amorphous. So amorphous is opposite of crystalline. Crystalline, we have molecules in the 
proper properly uh, arranged uh, arrangement, right? Uh, uh, a proper uh, orderly uh, the molecules are arranged in orderly manner. But amorphous means the molecules are random. Okay, so the amorphous system. Um, so the glassy state, in the glassy state, the, the molecules are arranged randomly and they are sort of frozen. Frozen means they cannot move. Yeah? The molecules cannot move because the viscosity is very, very high. So in the glassy state, the viscosity, the viscosity of the system is very, very high probably around 10 to the 12 pascal second. 10 to the 12 pascal second. Very, very high. The viscosity of water at room temperature, or maybe at 20 degrees Celsius, is only 1 milli pascal second. This is 10 to 12 pascal second. Or this one equal to 0 0.001 millipascal. Uh, sorry, pascal. Concentration of water, sorry, viscosity of water at room temperature is compared to this. Can you imagine? So the viscosity of the glassy material in a glassy state is very high. And therefore, the molecules cannot move around. It's kind of frozen, stationary, yeah, because the viscosity is very high. So what I want you to remember and understand now, just to, before we can discuss this graph, in a glassy state, the viscosity of the system is very high. In a glassy state, the molecules are stationary. They cannot move freely. They cannot move freely because the viscosity is very, very high. So that's only two things that I want you to understand for now. So in a glassy state, when T is below Tg, in the glassy state, yeah, in the glassy state, viscosity very high. What is the viscosity? About 10 to 12 min, uh, pascal second. So that is one. Number two, the molecules, the molecules are immobile. Immobile. Cannot move. So that is two things that I want you to understand for now before we discuss or before we can understand this graph. So, meaning that there are two extremes here. There are two extremes on the, on the x axis scale here. On this end, the solution or the melt the supersaturated solution or the supercool melt has a very high viscosity. The molecules are immobile. Okay. On this end, the supersaturated the supersaturated solution has lower viscosity. The molecule can move quite freely. Okay? So there are two extremes there. If that is clear, then we can understand now more about the system. So for a solution on this end, for a, for a super saturated solution, remember when we talk about crystallization, there's always two, solution and melt. So for a super saturated solution, on this end, the, the degree of Super saturation, the delta C, may be quite low. Yeah? So on this end, 
if we draw the solubility curve, if we draw the solubility curve, here is the uh, this is the temperature. Okay, here is the uh, the solid concentration. Uh, what do you call this? The why? Why is on y axis? Hmm? For the solubility curve. Okay, the concentration basically. So we have a solubility curve. So on this line, we have C S, which is equal to C EQ, the solubility. Okay, above this line, we get the C S S, the solution is in the super saturated state. So let's say we are here. Uh, let's say this is point A. Let's say this is point A. Uh, compared to here, we have point B. So here, the delta C equal to CSS for A minus the C EQ here. Here, we have delta C equal to CSS for B minus C E Q. So obviously, the degree of supersaturation at point B is higher than point A, right? Because we have bigger or higher degree of supersaturation compared to this one. Com this one compared to that. So in terms of driving force, which one would be, um, which one would have a higher driving force for nucleation at point B, so uh, at point B or point A? Point B or point A? Which one would have a higher tendency or higher driving force? for nucleation, point B or point A? Point B, because the degree, the delta C is higher compared to delta, uh, delta C for B is higher than compared to delta, delta C for A. So, on the, uh, at point A, yeah, at point A here, the rate of nucleation, uh, I'm referring to the dashed line, yeah? I'm referring to heterogeneous nucleation. The rate of nucleation at this point is rather low. Is rather low or slow. Because you can imagine at point A there, we are probably here. The degree of super saturation is lower. The degree of super saturation is lower is also means the driving force is also lower, which also means the driving force for nucleation is also lower. So you can see slow and suddenly psh, fast. So and reach a maximum at point B. So what happened between here till until point B? We get the degree of supersaturation getting higher and higher. When we remove more solvent by evaporation, so the concentration increase, increase, increase. So the degree of supersaturation also would 
increase, increase. So you get increase until up to a point. Any, you see, any natural system, when we study the natural system, system semula jadi, uh, when we study, say, the rate of reaction, it will increase initially, increase, increase, up to a point, then there's a maximum. Always like that. It cannot just increase, 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 increase to infinity. <laughs> yeah? Always reach a maximum. Why? So, remember how do we increase the degree of supersaturation? We have to remove the solvent, right? One way, one way is to remove the solvent. Another way, we can also uh, cool it down. Another way, we can add another solvent, a second solvent, remember, in the previous lectures. But let, let's, let's uh, now uh, uh, imagine that we are removing the solvent to increase the concentration. But what happens when you increase the solvent? Remember, what happens to the number of molecules per unit volume? Increase or decrease? Happen when we increase the concentration, the number of molecules per unit volume now increase, meaning that the, the concentration become more and more viscous. More and more viscous. Viscosity increase, viscosity increase, viscosity increase. The degree of supersaturation also increase. That will increase the driving force. We get higher rate of nucleation. But up to a point when now the viscosity become very high, the molecules now will have a difficulty to move. Remember, for nucleation to occur, the molecules must get together, come close together, arrange themselves two by two or three by three in a proper arrangement, right? But now, I want to go to Kat Yam there, Mariam. I want to arrange myself next to Mariam because I want to form a crystal uh, lattice with Mariam. I choose Mariam, I don't choose others. I want to go to her, but I want to move from this point to that point. Viscosity is very high. I simply cannot move. So that's why when the viscosity become higher, well, from this point, can you imagine now the viscosity is becoming higher and higher, approaching the glass transition. So. Now we can start to see the rate of nucleation becoming slower and slower and slower and slower. But from that point here downwards, actually the degree of supersaturation continue to increase. Theoretically, we should have a driving force more driving force for the nucleation. But the opposite is now happening. We get lower and lower rate because now there is an, the opposite force, which is increase in viscosity. Increase in viscosity result in uh, the movement of the molecules become more restrained, more restrictive, it cannot move to form a crystal lattice. Up to this point, where you get very, very slow. Because at point C, at point C, the viscosity, or from this point up to point C, the viscosity now becoming very high, that it will slow down the process of nucleation because the molecules cannot move, cannot move freely, cannot move easily. Can you imagine? Yeah? It's hard for me to really make you understand this, this diagram. If you just read the book, it sometimes can be a bit confusing. But now I have explained this. I hope it's clear. You go back and you read the book again or the notes and see whether it makes sense or not. Yeah? See whether it makes sense or not. It should, uh, <coughs> it should be able to make sense of the, the, the system. 
So the rate of nucleation would be dependent on the rate of cooling, on the degree of super saturation, and also the viscosity of the system. Yeah, the viscosity of the system. Okay, up to this point, are there anything that you need more uh, clarification? Before I proceed, we have another five minutes, seven minutes. Clear? Okay, good. Um, in, in this diagram, the driving force, you can see the arrow is pointing towards this direction, towards, towards, the, uh, towards the, uh, the right direction. So, la ola, as if the driving, the driving force keep increasing this way, right? Um, it's not, not, not really correct. Yeah? Initially, yes, the driving force increased from point A to point B. Why? Because the, the degree of supersaturation increases. Okay. The viscosity is still relatively low. So the molecules can, uh, you know, can, can start the nucleation. But from point B to point A, actually, the driving force now uh, getting lower. Yeah? Because the, in the viscosity increase. So that is nucleation. We are done with nucleation. Finish. Now we get the baby crystal. <laughs> yeah? At the end of nucleation, we get a baby crystal. The crystal is still uh, you know, young. Baby. So what the baby does, it will grow. It cannot just remain as baby, right? It will grow, grow up. To become, you know, young crystal, teenage crystal, and adult crystal. We use the same analogy. So it will grow. So the next stage in the nucleation is grow crystal, crystal, um, crystal growth. So it will grow and propagate. Propagate means become bigger. So nuclei that form can grow to larger size based on the available super saturation in the solution. So try to understand this sentence, a long sentence. Nuclei that form can grow to larger size based on the available, based on the available super saturation in the solution. The extent of this growth depends on the magnitude of supersaturation remaining in solution after nucleation has occurred. Growth, growth continues until all of the available supersaturation has been depleted. Depleted means habis. And the system approaches an equilibrium in phase volume, which depends on temperature and composition of the system. Boleh faham tak? Tak boleh. Panjang sangat ayat ni. Eh? This one I took from the book. Eh? From the uh, Richard Hartle. And should be also in the notes. You, We have to go back to the solubility curve. We have to go back to the solubility curve to understand this. So this solubility, solubility curve is a key to understand. That's why I spend some time on this solubility curve. The key to understand what happens uh, before and after nucleation and during growth. We go back to the first one. Grow to larger base based on the available super saturation in the solution. What is the meaning of available super saturation? If the nucleation start at point A, the 
the baby crystal form, the nuclei form, nucleus form, the available remaining super saturation is from this to this point on the solubility curve, back to the equilibrium solubility. Yeah, back to the equilibrium growth continues until all of the available super, super, super saturation has been depleted and the system approaches an equilibrium in phase volume. So, when the baby crystal form will now start to grow, how can the baby crystal grow? It will take more solute in the solution, it will attach to that baby crystal to allow the crystal to grow. So now, and when the crystal start to take more solutes to itself, the concentration of the solutes in the remaining solution would decrease. It will decrease. So this is the available remaining super saturation. So sampai this point, equilibrium. So what we have now achieved the maximum amount of crystalline phase volume that can be formed from point A to this line. If, if we start the nucleation at point B, which is higher than point A, the remaining, the remaining, the remaining what? Super saturation is from this point up to that point, which is much higher. So it will form the re the, the concentration now would, would decrease because more, crist more, more f free molecules form crystal now. So the, am the amount of free molecules in the solution reduce because it form crystal. So the concentration would decrease up to this point equilibrium stop. So now if we start the crystallization nucleation at point B, we get more solid crystal phase volume to form compared to if we start the crystallization or nucleation at point A. Okay? So that is the meaning. Growth continues until all of the available supersaturation has been depleted. When it reach when it reach this point, the Available super saturation is depleted. Abeda. At this point, it's already equilibrium. Below this point, dah jadi under saturated already. Itu maksudnya super all of the available super saturation has been depleted. Depleted dah sampai kat this point dah. And the system approaches an equilibrium in phase volume. When it reach this point, no more crystal can be formed. Maximum dah. Yeah? Which depends on the temperature and composition of the system. <laughs>